Hi, I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig, and today we're talking helmets, specifically the Climb Cryos versus the Arai XD4. Now, before we get started, I'm just gonna say these are my own opinions. Take it for what it is. It's funny because if you're reading online about these helmets, say the Climb Cryos here, you may read one review that says this is the quietest helmet that the person has ever had. They used to wear earplugs and now they don't. Well, then you read the next review underneath that and this person says that it's the loudest helmet they've ever had and they used to not have to wear earplugs and now they have to wear them. So with that said, We've got a lot to talk about, let's dive into this. The first thing that I think you'll notice when you pick up the Climb Cryos is how light it is. And it is a big difference between the XD4. Holding these one in each hand, it is a difference that you can feel. And where that really plays a part is after 10 or 12 hours of riding, it's gonna make a world of difference. The Climb is a full carbon fiber helmet, which is gonna to lead to it being so light. The Climb is a size small, which also uses the same shell size as the medium. When I weighed this one, it came in at 46.6 ounces, which is roughly 2.9 pounds. Now, the Arai is also a size small, and when I weighed it, it came in at 60.9 ounces, which is roughly 3.8 pounds. So there's almost a complete pound that is shed by going with the climb. One thing to note on the Arai, I do have communications mounted on the outside, so that is gonna affect the weight very slightly. It's not gonna add a lot, but it may add just a couple ounces to the Arai. Moving on to fit, the circumference of my nugget measures 57 centimeters. So going off of climb's size chart, I should be in a size medium, 56 to 57 centimeters. However, I ordered a medium and when it got here, it was just a little bit too loose. Good thing I have going for me is that this is the same shell as the small. So I ordered the small pads, which are thicker, thereby taking up all the room that I needed in this helmet. The Arai is also a small. However, the pads that came in this helmet were way too thick. So after about 30 minutes of wearing this, I had to pull it off because I had all kinds of hot spots, mainly on the front of my head and the back of my head. I just couldn't take it any longer. So I ordered the thinnest pads that I could get for this shell size, and that was perfect. I can wear this sun up to sundown, and it fits like a glove now. On the inside, the cheek pads on the Arai seem to be more dense than the cheek pads on the Climb. What that leads to is that the Climb, when you press on them, it doesn't take as much force to get them completely compressed. So when I put this one on, it seems to really slip down over my head a little bit easier than the Arai. The cheek pads also seem to be made of a little bit softer of a material on the exterior. So if you have a baby face and you need to protect it, the cheek pads on the climb are gonna be a little bit softer for you. Like I said, I do have communications mounted in the Arai. And one thing that I found is that they don't provide a ton of room for the speakers in this helmet. So if that speaker is not in the exact position that it needs to be in, I find that it really presses up against my ears and it can be quite painful. In the climb, they definitely seem to give you a lot more room for your speaker. So if you're gonna have helmet comms, I think that this one, is gonna give a little bit extra leeway so that you're not compromised with fit and comfort when you have speakers in them. Also with cheek pads, one thing I really like about the Arai is that on the bottom here, you have an emergency pull tab. So if you need to get this helmet off or rather maybe an emergency personnel needs to remove your helmet, they can pull on the tab and remove these cheek pads really easily. They just clip into place. However, on the climb, they don't offer that. These cheek pads are held in place with Velcro. So in the unfortunate circumstance that someone's gonna need to get your helmet off, it's just not gonna be quite as easy with the climb. Also, speaking of safety, both of these helmets are DOT approved. However, both of them also take it one step further. On the Arai, you can see on the back that they do have the Snell rating. And on the climb, they have the ECE rating. Now, if you go online and you look these ratings up, it's somewhat of a debatable topic. However, it does seem in the end that the ECE rating is a little bit higher of a standard versus the Snell. So impact protection, 
the climb is going to give you a little bit better protection. However, that's all going to come down to fit. If it doesn't fit you properly, it's not going to protect you properly. Another point to touch on are the visors. On the Arai, when I close the visor all the way, I still have a little bit of an air gap around the visor. I've never actually had any rain or moisture make its way up through that. But if you look up through the bottom, I can see a couple places where I have a little bit of air. When I close the visor on the climb, it is a very tight and secure click that I get on the last detent of this visor. And it forms a really nice seal around the entire helmet. Also, on the Arai, at the top of it, I have a couple vents that I can open to get a little bit more airflow through the visor where I don't have any type of venting like that on the climb. One thing I really like about the climb are the detents that they provide. Opening and closing the visor, you can feel each detent really well. However, the first detent is a little bit high. So if I need a little bit of airflow through the bottom, I have probably about a one inch gap in the bottom of the lens before it actually closes. I'd love to see maybe a little bit of a smaller gap there in case your lens starts fogging up on you and you don't want that much airflow through the entire thing. Speaking of venting, the Arai seems to have a few more options in that department. On the very top of the helmet, I have two vents that I can open and close right here, as well as on the back of the helmet, I have two more vents that I can open and close. And then the ones that I already spoke about that are on the visor, as well as the vent right here that's on your chin. On the climb, I have a vent that's right underneath the visor that I can open and close, and that's gonna allow airflow through the helmet and out the back right here. That's the only vent that you can open and close. I also have a vent here on the chin that's providing airflow to the visor to help prevent fogging. Speaking of fogging, something that's really cool that climb is doing and that's included in the helmet is the pin lock. Now this is actually going to lock in on the inside of the visor and it's a fog resistant lens. It comes just like this, installs in a matter of seconds on the inside of the lens. I love that they throw it in with the helmet. They also include another visor. This one, as you can see, is obviously a little bit darker than the clear visor that came on the helmet. It's easy enough to switch out and I really like that they include it with the helmet. Riding with both earplugs in and earplugs out, I found that the climb tends to be a little bit quieter versus the Arai. This is from speeds of 30 miles an hour or 70, where you're gonna get a lot of wind moving past the helmet. For whatever reason, the climb does seem to be a little bit quieter. One of the last points to hit on is the price. I think they're really comparable to each other. The climb comes in at about $550, and the Arai, I can find anywhere from about 500 to 550. So after all of this, which helmet would I choose? Well, I personally would go with the Climb. I just really like how much lighter it is, and the fit is still, in my opinion, as excellent as the Arai. With that said, which helmet should you go with? Well, I think it all really comes down to fit. Like I said in the beginning, just because it fits me doesn't mean that it's gonna fit you. So if you have the option to go to a store and buy it at a store and try it on, that's absolutely what I'd recommend. Hopefully you guys found this video somewhat helpful. I know it was lengthy, but I really wanted to touch on everything that I noticed between these two helmets. If you'd like to see more photos of the comparison between these two, please head over to our website, adventurerig.com where we have a lot of high quality photos for you to check out. If you'd like to know where Callie and I are or what we're up to, check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Adventure Rig. And if you like these videos, be sure to give us a like and also subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig.